It's time for the 1430 Connection on 1430 WNAV and 99.9 FM. Spotlighting news, newsmakers, and important community issues. Now, with this week's edition of the 1430 Connection, here is WNAV news anchor Donna Cole. Welcome to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me today are Pam Ray and Tim Wilbright. Pam is chairman of the Eastport Yacht Club Foundation. And Tim is the vice chairman of the Eastport Yacht Club Foundation. Welcome to both of you, and thank you for joining me. Thank you both. Thanks for having us. Pam, as I mentioned to you before we started the show, people have this image of yacht clubs as being maybe catering to the privileged elite. There's not a lot of knowledge that there is this other side of Eastport Yacht Club, and that's the Eastport Yacht Club Foundation. Correct, yes. And this is the giving arm of mm-hmm. the Eastport Yacht Club, and this is very cool. So when we're in December, we're hearing about the Eastport Yacht Club right now because of the the lights parade the lights parade so there is more to the yacht club than just this lights parade and just a place for sailors and power boaters to gather it is this giving arm called the foundation tell me what the foundation is all about Tim. the foundation encourages youth in both education and stewardship and the three things that we focus on are to understand the career opportunities available in the marine and maritime industries and we do that with kids from the time they're elementary school through high school in our different programs we also want to get kids to participate in sailing and boating and be exposed to the opportunities on the bay and wa- and on water in general that wouldn't normally get that opportunity. So we have a junior sailing program that brings young kids and low-income kids into the summertime camps in order to give them that experience. And then we are, embrace the responsibility of stewardship for the bay and all of our programs we weave um, ecosystem and environmental programming throughout them. So cool. I'm so glad to hear about all this mm-hmm. because I had no idea. And I, I just love that, that you're encouraging those that can't get out on the bay to get out on the bay to learn about boating, that there's this environmental interest. It's just fabulous. It was surprising to us to learn that some of the kids we serve in our STEM program, which is teaching math and science through sailing and boating, some of them are right at the Eastport Elementary School. And we found out last year from the teachers that when they come to the Yacht Club, which is four or five blocks away, it's the first time they've ever seen the Chesapeake Bay and they're bewildered and overwhelmed by it at first. Oh so we do a little bit of welcome for them that gets them acquainted with it. But it's, it's you, you just don't think in terms of the fact that they're close, yet they're so far. So we really appreciate the opportunity to work with the people we work with to bring them down and to provide them with this new the new insights on life. And speaking of the people you work with, you're unique in the Yacht Club world. You do have some people that you partner with, we do. including Anne Arundel. County Public Schools, right. right. So we have a continuum of programs, and we start with elementary school where we offer our junior sailing programs for summertime to bring in our elementary and middle school programs. Our STEM program is focused on fifth graders. We noticed a couple of years ago when we did focus groups in this area with nonprofits that the, the issue of STEM education was not being addressed in the elementary schools. So we work with three elementary schools in this area and Anne Arundel County Public Schools in order to bring those kids to the Yacht Club. And we do three days. We do about 100 or 120 kids, fifth graders, and we spend a morning doing modules on land where we move them around and we teach them about different things about navigation and ecosystems, mechanical advantage, where it's all hands-on, and we take them on boats in the afternoon. And our relationship with Anne Arundel County Public Schools is what makes that happen because otherwise we wouldn't have access or the easy coordination to get those kids. And Anne Arundel, we have Laura Pinto who runs uh-huh. the STEM program and we have David Foley who runs the Cat South program which is marine technology, both on our board. And so as liaisons to the foundation, we bring the programming and they bring the students and they bring resources. That's, so it's one component you noticed missing from the STEM program in the schools that you wanted to beef up? Is that what you're... Well, what we're saying is that if you, we we were originally with the STEM program, what we wanted to do was share it around the Chesapeake Bay with other yacht clubs. We're like, let's develop a model program, a pilot program, serve it in Anne Arundel, and also share it with other, other yacht clubs around the bay. Well, as we reached out, we started to find out these other yacht clubs don't have relationships with their local schools. And that was the key to making these programs work for us, is having somebody that did the work on that side of it that could bring the students in, that could tell us what the needs are. What are the needs of your fifth graders? Would they benefit from this? They worked with us on the curriculum to, um, to put it together. And we actually did share it last year. We took the fifth grade program outside of Anne Arundel County, and we shared it with the Calvert Marine Museum. And they had it for two weeks. They ran it for St. Mary's and Calvert County kids. They served about 200 people, parents, kids, homeschoolers, schoolers. And and um, what they're going to do this year is they're going to build their own modules and they're going to continue to run it based on our curriculum. So now this year we can take that program and get it into yet another community that has relationships 
with with the schools, which is turning out to be the Maritime Museums. Nice. So yeah. would the ultimate goal being hit every maritime community in the United States from Annapolis to San Diego, up to Newport, down to Miami? Oh, that would be everybody. fabulous. I mean, our goal is to start get this get this energized around the bay. And with that, fo- hopefully other folks can pick it up or in other states and around the country. That would be great. And you're prepared right as of now to send somebody all these modules and all of your yep. knowledge? We, yeah, we have a lot of things, resources we can share with them. They just have to come up with the schools. So Newport, San Diego, some... Miami, are you listening? Are you out there, yeah. Maine? <laughs> yep. Tim, you're the vice chairman of the Eastport Yacht Club Foundation, yes. but you also bring a particular knowledge. You own a boat dealership here in Annapolis. Yes, I own Annapolis Yacht Sales. So is this something that you see benefiting the yacht sales, boat sales industry? You're creating little boaters. Absolutely. Well, and not only that, you're creating the mindset that there is an opportunity in the maritime field. I mean, there's one aspect that's very tough when you're running a business is finding qualified people to come and work for you. So our goal by getting kids early in their life is to start setting a precedent that you know, that that job being a mechanic or working in a boatyard, there's actually some really high paying jobs out there in the marine and maritime industries. And so my uh, interest in getting involved in the foundation was to help perpetuate that. I mean, I, I never saw myself as a fifth grader, you know, working in the maritime industry yet here I am. So I, I, my hope is that we can inspire a few young kids and then nurture them along the way with the other programs that we have um, to, to help them develop the sense that this is something they might want to do. And especially living here in Annapolis, you know, we call ourselves the, uh, you know, the, the capital of sailing in America. So what, what a better place to do that than here. What a win-win, right? Yeah, and after fifth grade, our sixth, our middle school and high school program is huge. It's a marine and maritime let's, career fair. Actually, yeah. let's talk about that. We're going to take a quick break, okay. but when we come back, we're going to talk about growing up with the Eastport Yacht Club Foundation. Okay. I'm Donna Cole. This is the 1430 Connection. We will be right back. Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me today is Pam Ray. She's chairman of the Eastport Yacht Club Foundation. And Tim Wilbright, he's vice chairman. We're talking about all that the foundation does. And this is a separate arm from the Eastport Yacht Club. This is the giving arm. You're giving back to the community. And we were just talking about giving back to fifth graders. Once they're out of fifth grade, then what happens? Our, we have a middle school and high school program called Marine and Maritime Career Fair. And it's once a year, the fourth Saturday in February. And it brings together people from across marine and maritime jobs and careers and fields in order to teach kids that these opportunities are available. And it's a career fair. We never set it up as a job fair because we really thought it was important to start exposing kids to the opportunities that are out there and to teach them about the pathways to get there because our kids are not born knowing about these careers. And this is the seventh year of it. Um, The reason that whole thing started was from the marine trades industry you know, thinking back six or seven or eight years ago, how are we going to fill our company? Who's going to run our company someday? And so nobody was in the pipeline. Where's our workforce? Well, you know what? The kids don't know until you teach them. So the Marine and Maritime Career Fair was started in order to educate the kids about marine trades. And it has expanded so that it also includes maritime shipping and marine sciences across the board, anything marine and maritime. And we had We've had a couple hundred kids every year come, but last year under Tim's leadership, he's also chairman of the career fair. Uh, we doubled attendance of students and parents, wow. and our exhibitors sold out at 50, and this is held at the Annapolis High School. This year, we expect to break those records again, which means more and more people are learning that we're there, and they're learning that they that it's of interest, that it's something that, that they want to do. careers exist. That they exist, and they not only exist, uh, but they exist here. Yeah. And people can learn, people learn that they can not only grow up here and play here, but they can work here and raise their families here and make a good living. Tim, tell me what date this is being held. It's uh, February 25th at the Annapolis High School, uh, right right up the road from us on Reaver Road. Um, and it is from noon until four. And open to kids and parents of all ages Absolutely, and kids, high school, college kids. You know, surprisingly enough, we had a number of colleges show up and a number of college age kids coming through, not only looking for summertime work, but also just interested in maybe switching from one school to another because of their interest, let's say in marine biology. And these schools that have those dedicated programs that are very specific to the marine industries and maritime trades, they're there. And so uh, the kids got to introduce themselves to the colleges. One of the busiest booths was one of the college booths. And it was just really exciting to see the kids 
get to know what the opportunities are out there in these fields. I know you can't name every single one of the exhibitors off the top of your head, but try to. Um, we have maritime schools there. The University of New Orleans was there last year. The landing school has been there. The auto tech, what's the technical yeah, training, the center. training center? And Anne Arundel Community College. They nice. came for the first time last year. They have something. And really, we started out middle school and high school. And a couple years ago, we started to get parents calling and saying, hey, can I bring my college kids? They still don't know what they want to do. We're like, absolutely. So we started to reach out more and more to the colleges and universities, too. Super. This yeah. It really is a, a great thing. And so one more time for the date on that. February 25th at Annapolis High School. And to find out more information? Just go to our website, www eycfoundation.org. Okay, and Pam. it's actually our registration is set up on our website for exhibitors and for students and we like students to pre-register because we have they can qualify for a grand prize if they do it and those are pretty big. And this is free. Mm -hmm. It's free for students. The exhibitors pay for their booths. That pays for the event. Um, I just want to mention, too, that in addition to learning about careers and we calling it a career fair, they, a lot of these kids actually go away with internships and jobs. Last year, we had Back Creek Conservancy and Marine Trades Association leave with handfuls of applications for intern programs. And we had Watermark gave us a testimonial that the best employee that they've ever had came from our career fair oh, last year. Awesome. So we hear these things and our grand prizes have inspired kids to do more and to get involved and to learn broader. We have a career challenge. It requires the kids to go to at least 10 exhibitors, have conversations, get signatures, and then they can enter their name in it. A couple of years ago, we had a Lear engine um, donated by Scandia Marine. And we, at, at the last minute, we're like, oh no, what if the kids get this? And then they sell it on eBay. It did not happen. Someone won it. They got a job. This young boy got a job. He bought a boat and he put the two together. Oh so so this, yeah. this inspires in a, from a lot of different directions. And the exhibitors are key mentors in this. So we have tried to encourage exhibitors to bring youth to bring your younger kids because the kids like to talk to kids and hands-on, anything hands-on that the kids can touch and experience. We've had, we had engine. What did Carl bring last year? Brought a big diesel engine, a big Westerbeek. And the other thing that's really interesting is we have some speakers that we bring in and the talks that they're able to give to talk about what they do every day. And it's really interesting to hear the questions that the kids have for these, for these speakers. They, they give great speeches about what their life is like. And I think really inspires the younger kids to really think about taking a path towards a career in the Marine field because of what they hear. I think it's one of the few opportunities in one of the few industries, at least here locally, that offers this type of experience. So I, I think that it's unique and that kids respond to it. Nice. We're going to take another short break. This is the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. We will be right back. Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me today is Pam Ray. She's chairman of the Eastport Yacht Club Foundation, as well as Tim Wilbright. He's vice chairman of the Eastport Yacht Club Foundation. We are talking about all they do in giving back to our community. So we've talked about the STEM program. We've talked about the career fair, which now I want to go to. It sounds Good. incredibly Great. interesting. Great. And now let's talk about scholarships because you do offer some scholarships. We do. We have a, our next kind of component of our continuum of programming. Mm -hmm. is for high school graduates, and this is of any age, because we provide marine and maritime scholarships for kids who are going to one, two, three, or four-year colleges. And everywhere from marine trades programs to maritime to oceanography and um, engineering. So we have a gamut of kids. It's up to $2,000 a year that they can get. Uh -huh. Um, it doesn't sound like a lot in today's educational world, but every little but, bit helps. Oh my gosh, every and, little bit helps. And yeah. this year we gave out $14,000 in scholarships. Next year, our, our goal is to get up to $40,000 a year with mm -hmm. our programming, which means our fundraising is really, really important to us too. We would do 20 kids a year yeah. and to stick with them from the beginning of their program through the end of their program. We also mentor them and they have been surprised at how much attention we pay to what they're doing, but also appreciate it. And in some cases, it's kind of helped guide kids to stay on the path. So. Okay. Have you seen any go through school and come out the other end? Yeah. With, okay, tell me about Yeah, tell we had Ty story. Davidson was, he went to a maritime school uh -huh. and he, I think he was a three-year program or so, maybe four, and he came out this year. He started before we actually were with the foundation and he finished this year. So we've been with kids now a couple of years. We had three or four, we had seven scholarships and three or four of them were previous kids from last year. Uh -huh. And then we had two or three additional new ones that we added to the mix. So we're looking to get the word out on those scholarships more and more. Right. so that more and more kids will take advantage of them because we are raising funds to have the resources to help up to $40,000 in scholarships a year. We also have endowments. We have one endowment set up already. And um, so money and mentors is the bottom line for us in working hard to make that program work. 
So down the road, what are some of the goals of the foundation that you haven't already? I know you're probably sitting around in board meetings dreaming up big ideas. Tim, let me hear some of them. Well, again, I think the, the primary goal that we have is to create a, um, a, a fundraising effort that's going to allow our, our foundation to grow and to maintain itself over time. So that's a legacy that we want to leave to the next generation that takes over the foundation isn't the responsibility to take on all these big programs, but to be able to have the resources to do that. So well, one of our big pushes is to get into some some legacy giving with some of the members of the Eastport Yacht Club. Another big goal that we have is to just continue to build out our programs to make the uh, the programs that we do have more exciting and serve more people. And Pam, what other ideas? I would say mentoring, growing our mentoring programs. You know, we'd love having these kids in. I'd love to be in touch with some of these fifth graders a couple more times throughout the year mm -hmm. and have our folks go into their classroom maybe and do things that keep them engaged and keep the ideas alive in their heads. Because when we take these kids out on a boat, uh, they think it's amazing. And a lot of them are scared when they go into it. You'll, you'll hear them get on a boat scared, 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 and then they'll come off the boat the other end and they go, now I want to be a boat captain when oh, I grow up. Yeah. So I'd love to be able to kind of weave new things into the programs that get more and more of our volunteers and mentors out there into the community and to keep touching the kids that we're touching and reach even more yeah, wherever I, we can. One of the other programs that we have is kind of like the final stage of our program continuum and that is that we biannually have something that's called the Marine Wizards Awards and basically what we do is we recognize those mentors in the industry, those those guys that just set the standard for what they do, whether it be working in a boatyard as, as, as a labor or it's you know a guy that's an ace mechanic or somebody that is an absolute expert at at, uh, at fiberglass repair. So every two years we recognize those within the industry locally within Anne Arundel County specifically that have really gone above and beyond to set a standard for mentoring younger people, and we 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 designate them with the award of being a marine wizard. And um, and again that kind of sets them apart from everybody else in the industry, and it's a way of recognizing the true great people that we have uh, here locally within that industry. We have two additional programs I wanted to bring up quickly. Yeah, one is um, One is a part our junior sailing program and we gave out over 20 scholarships for kids who wouldn't normally be able to come to that, um, to come to EYC summer camps this summer. And one of them is with um, a local nonprofit in town called Seeds for Success. And last year when we were doing this, we were looking for a group of kids and we started to give out some scholarships to them and it turned out that we that our junior sailing program created an entire week just for them. So they took their That's Seeds for incredible. Success kids yeah. from that camp to EYC for a week. And nice. these kids are still talking about it right. and that's one of the areas that like they want to come back now and so we're looking at maybe using one of our stem modules in the winter time to bring them over and keep them like let them come back to the club keep and do something growing. different yeah. yeah and do that and the other program we have is a community grants program which is typically um, we have worked with spot creek conservancy and back creek conservancy mm -hmm. we've given a grant to cat south and these are all tied into either the stewardship of the bay or marine and maritime careers and getting kids hands-on experience out there. And we actually have a couple more left this year. So if there's anybody out there looking for a community grant to that meets some of our um, our vision and our mission, we'd love to work with you. One more time on the website. Oh, it's eycfoundation.org. And that's where people that, that are looking we, for grants, yeah. information on the yes. STEM program, information on the scholarships, information on everything we've talked yep, about. Yeah. These programs don't come for free. So in the big green buttons you'll see now on our website that say donate now, we can't say enough uh, thanks to the people that have donated and, and, cre and created the possibility for all these things to happen. But the only way to continue to do what we do is to is to get out there and, and fundraise. So we set the bar very, very high this year as far as our fundraising efforts go. And uh, so far we're on track to meet those goals. And uh, we just can't thank enough the supporters because it is a 501 foundation and it's a tax deductible way to to help create the, the next generation of stewards of the bay and as you know we're in annapolis and that's pretty important yeah we're going to have an auction at eyc on wednesday december 7th and we're looking for donations for that so far we have scandia marine donated a, a whole haul out in a couple months of storage valued at eighteen hundred dollars wow. we have a donation for five days at a tampa bay waterfront condo that's about a thousand dollars and we're looking for people who want to donate tickets or a sale on the bay or a party a happy hour on the bay hint, hint or race or, ra there, or yeah. a class for train for racing or cruising or or whatever yeah hint hint so if anybody is inspired right now to give back and help us give back get on that yeah website. yep please do very good Tim Contact us. and Pam thank you so much for joining me thank today. you so much for having us and helping us get the word out absolutely thank you this is Donna Cole this has been the 1430 connection we will see you next week